Hey there witches and wizards, welcome to this new video where I want to share some of my magic tips and tricks for Hogwarts Legacy with you. I know some of you may have already begun your journey at the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, while others may be eager to jump in and start exploring the famous school and its surroundings. Either way, you'll soon find that there's a lot to do and plenty of opportunity to wander off the path. So even though you have the complete freedom to play the game in any way that you desire, I would like to share with you 5 things the game doesn't tell you and that I would do first if I had the chance to start my adventure all over again. These 5 tips, I believe, are the key to setting yourself up for a more enjoyable journey and will help you get off to the best possible start. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, it really helps me and the channel grow. And of course, feel free to hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop for even more Hogwarts Legacy content. Now, let's dive into the video together. As I've said in previous videos, I'm most excited about discovering all the secrets and exploring the open world and every nook and cranny of Hogwarts. And on my first playthrough, I did exactly that. I wandered around Hogwarts, chased after dragonfly keys and enchanted flying books and did all sorts of additional activities and side quests. And while I definitely had a blast, I would not recommend doing that. It was surprising to see how essential parts of the game remained locked behind your progress in the main mission. For example, I was sure I would get my broomstick quickly to make traveling a lot easier. Nope, not at all. It took me 10 whole in-game hours to finally get it while I was exploring everything on foot. And the same goes for the Room of Requirement, which was shown and advertised multiple times before the game's release. I thought I would have access to it early on, as it plays such a big role in our time at Hogwarts. But that was not the case at all. It took me even longer to unlock it. I first set foot in the Room of Requirement at around the 11 hours mark of my journey. So my advice is clear, focus on the main missions at the beginning, leave all the collectibles and the side quests aside, you can get to them later on. And most of the time you'll just get codex entries, cosmetic items or just XP anyways for completing them. And just to clarify, when it comes to side missions, just activate them, but do some research in your quest log first and weigh the reward before jumping in. Check out what you'll get for completing it and then decide if it's worth it compared to something like your trusty broomstick. Would you rather get some not-so-fancy rope or start flying your broomstick around Hogwarts and the Quidditch pitch much earlier? And just to be sure, when I say main missions, I'm talking about the ones with the yellow symbols. They are key to unlocking all the essentials in the game, like armor upgrades, new spells, the room of requirement, and even the cute magical creatures. But don't underestimate the power of those non-yellow missions just yet. They're still super important. That leads us to tip number two. Make sure you'll attend all classroom related missions. That's right, attending class is crucial to learning important game functions and improving your skills. You'll not only learn spells, how to brew potions, and how to use magical plants to your advantage, but all sorts of useful tricks, like how to even use certain collectibles in the open world. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on all this wizarding wisdom, otherwise you'll be wandering around aimlessly, just like I did, wondering how to interact with certain objects, because I rather went exploring the world on my own instead of attending class regularly. Therefore, I missed out on some of the essential knowledge of Hogwarts. So keep it simple, stick to the yellow main missions and class attendance. Now let's get to the magic with tip number three. We're all here at Hogwarts to learn how to cast spells and enchantments, right? And since we're starting as a fifth year student and have some catching up to do on all the wizarding goodness our fellow students have already learned about, our professors will give us extracurricular activities. And while some are a bit more tedious, others might seem like simple tasks. For example, drink Potion X together with Potion Y and then return to your professor. But all those tasks have one thing in common, that they are actually super important for your progress. After completing the extracurricular assignments, you'll unlock new spells or even more lessons to further improve your skills. Here's an example. 
Levioso, the spell that lets you levitate objects and opponents, is available pretty early on. But if you want to not only lift, but also transport things, you'll need Wingardium Leviosa, which you'll only get by completing the extra lessons. Or take Incendio, the firecasting spell, which is also available early in the game, but has very limited range. Some puzzles can't be solved with its limitations, and especially in combat it can get you in rather unpleasant disadvantage when you have to close the gap to an enemy first, in order to break its red shield. To unleash the power of Confringo, a spell that shoots fireballs at a great range, you'll need to complete an additional task assigned by your professors. Trust me, if you want to quickly expand your arsenal of spells, and you definitely want to do this rather early than late, because otherwise you'll be locked out of many activities and puzzles in the open world, it's definitely worth focusing on these extra lessons. Quick shout out before we move on to the next tip. Check out my partner Instant Gaming for some amazing deals on game codes and gift cards. And if you use the links in the video description, you'll be supporting me and the channel. Thanks in advance. Now on to tip number 4. I highly recommend you sell your gear regularly. And when I say regularly, I actually mean all the time. You only have 20 slots at the start of the game, spread out over all 6 pieces of armor, which is super limiting. This isn't nearly enough, especially as you get new loot all the time. And the frustrating part is that when your inventory is at capacity and you open a big treasure chest, you'll get a notification that your inventory is full. And even after deleting old gear pieces, you won't be able to get that loot again. With smaller chests, you'll just get a message that your inventory is full, but you can still loot the chest after clearing some space. But for the big ones, the ones with the really good stuff in them, that wouldn't work. I've already lost some high stat loot a couple of times. I'm assuming this is a bug that will be fixed eventually, but it's still very annoying, especially at the beginning of the game. So always put on the armor with the best stats and sell your lower level gear, because selling is the only way you'll make some galleons. Breaking down armor pieces won't give you anything, even if there are upgrades on them. So don't even bother breaking them down, just sell everything for the cash. And the last but oh so important tip I want to give you, tip number 5, is to regularly head over to your challenges tab and check if you've completed some. Because if you have, you'll need to manually redeem them. Yep, you won't get the reward automatically, you gotta head to the menu, redeem that reward and unlock it. And there are some super cool things in store, like expanding your inventory, so you have more slots for all the armor pieces you'll collect on your journey. So as you can see, these upgrades are crucial and you definitely don't want to miss out on them. That's why in the next video we'll take a closer look at which ones are worth it and which ones you should complete as soon as possible. And that's a wrap for this video. As always, a thumbs up is very appreciated. That's it from me for now. Have an awesome day and I'll catch you in the next one.